Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Today I have another ranking video for you guys. I recently filmed a video ranking all of the eyeshadow palettes that I've tried so far in 2019. So I'll link that video in the description box below if you want to check it out. I had so much fun filming that video and I got a lot of comments from you guys asking to see more ranking videos on my channel. I've gotten inspiration from some of my favorite YouTubers who do film ranking videos like Kelly Gooch, Samantha March, um, who am I missing? Ashley Clady. I'm going to link some of my favorites in the description box below, but I'm going to go through and rank my powders. I thought this would be a fun category for you guys because I love powder. I'm always trying new powders. I always have a lot of powders in my collection that I'm using over and over. Like all of the powders that I have to share with you today are powders that I reach for every single week. Even though I'm ranking them like worst all the way up to best, even the powders at the bottom of my list are still powders that I do enjoy using. Otherwise, I would have declared them for my collection. So I hope today's video is still fun for you guys. It's just meant to be like a casual, fun video, and I thought it would be a fun challenge. So let me know in the comment section below all about your favorite powders. I would love to hear your ranking of your powder collection, but let's jump into it and I'll kick it off with number 11. So the powder at the bottom of my list is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores Pressed Powder. I go back and forth on this powder so much. I think the last time I used it up, I told myself I was not going to buy it, and then after I actually finished it up, I really missed it. And it was on sale during, I think one of Ulta's 21 days of beauty sales. So I did pick it up and I don't regret repurchasing it, but I kind of feel like out of all of the powders in my collection, this is one that I just kind of feel like so, so about. It is a translucent pressed powder and I do have quite a few of those. So typically when I'm reaching for one of my translucent pressed powders, this is one that I reach for the least. So I think because of that, I decided to put it at the bottom of my list. Also because there are more affordable options that I like better. So I did pick up the Milani Conceal and Perfect Shine Proof Powder when I was looking for a dupe for the Kat Von D Locket Powder Foundation. And I definitely think this is a really good affordable alternative. If you like the Kat Von D powder and you're also looking for an alternative, this one is a great option. The reason I'm ranking it at number 10 is because I don't typically reach for such an intensely matte powder these days. This one actually provides pretty good coverage. So if you're looking for a powder foundation or if you like a powder that adds extra coverage to wear over a liquid foundation, then you're definitely going to enjoy this one. And on days where I want a really matte full coverage look, this one is absolutely perfect because it does lock everything into place. It stays matte throughout the day and it does give me that extra coverage. So it is a nice option to have in my collection. It's just not something that I reach for super often because I usually prefer something a little bit lighter these days. So the next one is the Catrice Prime and Fine Mattifying Waterproof Powder. This one is a translucent powder. And again, this is one that I go back and forth on so much. I think I typically prefer this one during the fall and the winter because it is more of a lightweight powder. It does lock everything into place, but it's not overly mattifying. So I think it is a nice option if you truly just want a super light dusting of powder. So I do like it for those days, but typically I just like something that's a little more powdery than this one, which is weird to say. I think that this is perfect for those of you that don't like the feel of powder, but sometimes you feel like you have to lay something down before you apply the rest of your cheek products. That's what this powder is going to be great for. So it is number nine on my list. I do like it and I think it works well, but typically these days I just prefer something I don't wanna say heavier, just a little bit more powdery, if that makes sense. Now, number eight is on my list for very similar reasons. If you like almost non-existent powders, again, this one's going to be a great option. It is the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. This is one of the most beautiful, subtle powders that I've ever tried. I really enjoy Hourglass powder products in general, and I do love this product so much. It's not something that I reach for every single day or really every single week, but on days where I I just feel like I want my skin to look really smooth, really flawless, and I take the time to add like a finishing powder on top, I will reach for this. I personally don't use it as a setting powder because I find that my foundation, my concealer, it will move around, it will break apart, it will crease on me, I'll get super oily throughout the day if I use this as a setting powder. I like using it as a finishing powder because it is so lightweight and natural looking that if you just blend everything out with this product as like your final step, everything looks so smooth and airbrushed. And I I think if you have dry skin or you like a really lightweight powder that's, again, very natural, almost non-existent looking, then this would be a great option for you. But 
you know, personal preference, I usually prefer something a little bit more mattifying. So that's why I'm personally ranking it at number eight, but I do think it is a really high quality product. I guess I should mention in case this isn't already obvious, this is totally based on personal preference. I'm just kind of ranking them on what I would consider the worst all the way up to what I would consider the best. I try to take like price into consideration, but you know, and quality obviously, but I think a lot of products just come down to personal preference. These next two powders are kind of interchangeable in my collection. I feel like they perform very similarly. In fact, I consider one of them, or I consider them dupes for the most part, but there is one big difference in ingredients. Now I did rank one a little bit lower because it is more expensive. This one is the Cover FX Perfect Setting Powder. I really like this powder because it is a nice translucent loose powder, but it's not overly mattifying and it does not look dry on the skin. This one locks everything into place really well. Definitely better than the hourglass powder for me personally. So when I want longevity and I want my foundation and concealer to last, this one is a great option because it goes on nicely. You can use it for baking. It is talc free, which is a really big a really big selling point for a lot of people. And I just think it looks very nice on the skin. It doesn't really enhance texture. I think it works well for you no matter what skin type you have. I personally think the ColourPop No Filter Loose Setting Powder is very, very similar. In fact, I would consider it a dupe. Now there is one big difference. The ColourPop powder is not talc free. So that is something to take into consideration. It is a lot more affordable. So that's why I'm ranking it a little bit higher on the list. Typically I reach for this one over the Cover FX powder just because it is a lot more affordable and I go through powder pretty quickly so I really enjoy using this one but when I apply them side by side I really feel like they look the exact same and my foundation wears you know evenly on both sides Okay, moving into the top five powders. These are the ones that I reach for the most often. They are my go-to powders. And these are ones that I typically, or that I think I'll probably end up using up and repurchasing at some point. So the first one is one that I've repurchased multiple times. This one is ranked at number five. It is the Essence All About Matte Fixing Compact Powder. This is such an affordable powder, but it really is such a good pressed mattifying powder. If you have really oily skin and you just want a good pressed powder that you can use to set your foundation into place, but also touch up throughout the day, this is such a great option. I've repurchased it multiple times. Typically I reach for it a lot during the summertime because it's lightweight, it's comfortable, it's easy to use. I love using it to set everything into place. But again, during the day, I'll take like a large fluffy brush and just kind of dust it lightly all over my face. And it just kind of refreshes my skin and mattifies everything so well. Number four is a powder foundation. This one is the Laura Geller Baked Balance and Brighten Foundation and I wear the shade Fair. Again, this is one that I went back and forth on so many times, but ever since I put it in my project pan for 2019, I've really fallen in love with it because I've used it so much. This, first of all, will last absolutely forever. I've used this powder so much and I'm almost done with it, but it's lasted longer than like five of my powders combined. It is a baked product, so I find that it does keep my skin looking matte, which is really nice, and I can use it on its own as a powder foundation or on top of liquid foundation. I'm just really impressed by this formula. I really do love it on days where I want a little bit of extra coverage from my powder, but I still want my skin to look, you know, like skin. When I don't want it to look overly matte, this one's a great option because it does mattify my skin and lock everything into place without looking too heavy. Okay, number three is the Too Faced Peach Perfect Mattifying Loose Setting Powder. I love this product so much. I'm wearing this today and I've worn it so much in 2019. You do get a significant amount of product. You get 1.23 ounces. And this is, in my opinion, the absolute best loose mattifying powder. I kind of wish they created a pressed version of this because typically I do prefer pressed powders over loose powders, but this one will keep your skin so matte. But again, it gives you a really soft, natural finish. It looks absolutely beautiful on the skin. I am wearing it today, and I just find that it really does lock my foundation into place so well all day long. I think there is a misconception that matte powders look really dry and heavy and cakey on the skin. And I think that there are powders out there that do look like that. But this one looks so 
naturally smooth. And at the same time, my skin stays matte throughout the day. I, I think that I even kind of fall into that category of people that think mattifying products have to look like dry and heavy, but they really don't. This one is so lightweight, so smoothing, and I love how it makes my skin look. So I had to rank this one at number three. I'd probably rank it higher, but I do tend to prefer pressed powders overall. So that's why I ranked it a little bit lower, but I really love it. It's one of my top powders. Okay, you guys, number two is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. This is one of the most beautiful powder formulas on the market. I really have not discovered a powder that makes my skin look so smooth and naturally flawless. This really does give my skin an airbrush finish. I love using this to set my under eye concealer or I apply it on areas of my face where my foundation tends to crease, like between my brows, and it just makes everything so smooth and airbrushed and really truly flawless. Like this really is a product that lives up to its name. This is an expensive powder and you don't necessarily get a ton of products. You get 0.28 ounces. I go through powder so fast. And because this is like such a finely milled powder, if I was to use this every single day to set my entire face, I would go through it like within two weeks. I'm sure of it. And honestly, I just cannot justify spending that much on powder that often. A lot of people are like, well, if you don't buy so many powders, like maybe you could justify the price tag, but I just, I can't. I know how fast I go through powder. And as much as I like this one, I do have other powders that I like, you know, almost just as much. I will say because this is so finely milled, I don't find that it necessarily locks my foundation into place all day long either. So it's ranked pretty high on my list because I truly do think it is such a unique, gorgeous formula. And there really are very few powders that compare to this one that I've personally tried, but there is one that topped this one. So I'm going to share that with you guys now. So number one on my list is the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Perfecting Powder. I have the shade L1, and the reason that this is number one is because in my mind, I think that it is a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury powder, but it's a lot more affordable. Again, it gives you a really smooth airbrush finish, and I just think the textures are so incredibly similar. I was so excited when I found this one. So I love using this one to set my foundation into place because it does lock everything into place, but it has a little bit of coverage. So I just think it makes everything look that much more just perfected overall. I'm so impressed by the texture of this product, by the quality of it. I think that it keeps my skin looking matte, but not overly matte. It makes my skin look like skin, but better because it has those blurring aspects to it. And I just really enjoy this product overall. You can also use it for touching up. You can use it to set everything into place. You can use it on its own. Overall, it's just like my perfect powder. So I had to rank it at number one. Okay guys, so that is the end of my video. Thank you so much for watching. I feel like that was difficult. It's hard to go through and rank products, especially when you love all of them for different reasons, but I have a lot of fun doing it. So if you want me to rank any other, what am I trying to say? Categories in my collection, let me know and I can definitely do that. Otherwise, I hope that you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you very soon with a new video. Bye.